Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. If you can, turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. Uh, there's something there that, that I think that we need to deal with today. Uh, we need to deal with this today. Uh, looking at 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, and I want everybody to focus in on the first verse. I am reading from the Living Translation Bible slash the Eastern Standard Version slash whatever version will work for you today. And we want you to focus in on verse number one, and it goes like this. So David left Gath. Somebody say Gath. And it escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. And then others began coming, men who were in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him and became, he became commander or captain over them. And there with him were about 400 men. There were about 400 men. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Real quickly, uh, just for a couple of moments today, I want to leave us enough time so that we can go out and enjoy this 70-something degree Southern California weather. Has anybody been happy for it to stop raining besides me? I'm not good. I didn't pray for the rain. I didn't ask the rain to be here. I didn't want the rain to be here. I'm a 70-ish between 79 degree type of person. Amen. And so I'm so happy that the sun has come back to us. I'm, I'm so glad that the sun and I have kissed and made up. Amen? And so we're going to let you go today and let you go back. But, but just for a couple of moments, from this thought right here in the first verse, and David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Dulem. I, I wanted to bring these thoughts to you today, and I'm hoping that you can help me with this message, stuck in the cave. Stuck in the cave. Now, usually when I'm going for hospital visits and I, I, I know that someone is in the hospital or someone is on their way to recovery and someone has just got out of surgery or they're there and they're occupying uh, the patient quarters, um, I'm very respectful as it pertains to the no visitor policy or the families respecting the family wishes when they ask you, listen, um, you know, a uh, 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 little is going to hold off on visitors right now. He doesn't want any company, and, and we just think that we should, you know, we'll call you. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll get back with you when it's okay to have visitors at this time. I I'm very respectful of that because uh, I want to be respectful of the person's wishes because I understand that's what's going through a person's mind at that time. Sometimes uh, when people are in that condition and you got tubes coming out of your body and you got breathing apparatuses over your face and you got open wounds and you got bandages everywhere and you're wrapped and you got broken bones and you're in this brace with pins going through your legs and going through your arms and you, you got harnesses going on. You don't want nobody to see you like that. I get it. I get it. When I'm broken down, I hear you talking, Jesus, and I'm busted and disgusted, I'd like to take that time to isolate myself, uh -huh. and, and then I'll reappear once God gets through healing me and bringing me back together. Somebody say, let God put Humpty Dumpty back together again, you know, then I'll reappear. But when you got tubes going through your nose and, and you got a machine helping you breathe, you don't want nobody, I don't want visitors right now, uh-uh. I couldn't get to my comb in time. I, I, I don't know where my comb is right now. Uh-uh. I don't want, there's a bedpan, oh God. There's a bedpan under my bed, a full bedpan under my bed right now. Tell my visitors to hold up for a minute. I get it. I understand and I recognize that, that while I'm being healed, while I'm on my road to recovery, I need to be isolated for a minute. I, I need to be isolated. I, I respect a, a 
people's privacy. I respect the whole HIPAA act or HIPAA laws, and, and I'm cool with that uh, because let's be honest, most people, they don't understand. Most people, they, they, they understand that people won't understand who they are or what they appear to be in that shape or in that form right now. I don't look like the person you normally, that you're normally used to talking to. I don't, my, my, my emotions are everywhere right now. I'm still heavily medicated. My, I'm not up for hospitality right now. So, so, so if at all, I'd like to isolate myself just for a minute so that I can get myself together. Somebody say, help me get it together. So it's because of that, that, that I want to talk to people today. I, I want to talk to some people today that are, that are in recovery right now. I'm coming out of the last season in my life, and the, the last season in my life was a hurricane, was a natural disaster. You know how it looks after natural disasters. There's literally debris and stuff everywhere. I'm coming out of a season right now, and after that last season, I just need a moment of isolation so that I can pick up the pieces of my life. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about? Let me get my mind back together again. Let me get my relationships back together again. Let me get my money back together again. And, and once I get myself together, then we can go ahead and we can accept visitors at this time. Does anybody feel like that except for me? So, so it's here that, that it brings us to uh, our story today. And in our story, we're here with David, King David. King David is here at the cave of Adullam. And, and King David, I, I have to ask the first question of the text because I, I know you want to ask questions too. David, you're a king or an apprentice or an, appear, an appear, heir apparent to the throne. What are you doing in a cave? Scripture lets us know that, that David had just ran from Gath. Gath is the hometown of Goliath. And, and if you know something about the story of David and Goliath, David ain't too popular in Gath. David, that's the last place you want to be. Sending David to Gath is like sending Bush, excuse me, sending Trump to Mexico right about now. That's the last place you want to be, Donald Trump. You could be anywhere except for Mexico right now. I don't think it'll be too safe for you right now. David could be anywhere in the world, but he happens to be in Gath. And after that near-death experience, Scripture records that David had a psychotic episode or a mental meltdown in Gath. Had a mental meltdown. Couldn't keep it together. He was drooling. He was faming. He started turning into an animal, Scripture records. He, he looks like an animal. And so he has this psychotic meltdown. He has this, this mental meltdown, this psychotic episode that he's acting out. And he goes for isolation, and he finds a cave, the cave of Adullam. And that's where we find him at today. So it's here that we look at the cave. I like this because history records uh, uh, that logistically the cave was somewhere between Bethlehem and the Red Sea. Y'all see me logistic wise. Logistics wise, the cave was between Bethlehem in the Red Sea. And of course, we know where Bethlehem is. Bethlehem is the place that exactly a thousand years from this story is where Jesus was born. Bethlehem. Baby Jesus, Mary's baby, Bethlehem. He's between Bethlehem and the Red Sea. Y'all, y'all might not know anything about the Red Sea, but the Red Sea is the place where God has performed one of his greatest miracles at. He's between Bethlehem and the Red Sea. And God showed me something and gave me revelation right there some of us are isolated right now because I'm literally between Jesus the place where Jesus shows up in my next miracle I'm just waiting for one or the other to start happening so I'm sitting here and and we're looking at the cave and this cave is is interesting Sylvia it represents it represents a place in my life this this dark cave this fungus filled cave this moisture wet cave represents a place in my life this cave represents a place in my life where nobody sees me and nobody cares you like me you ever been in those places I just feel like nobody cares if I show up nobody cares if I stay home 
Nobody cares if I call. Nobody cares if I text. Nobody cares if I drive by. Nobody cares if they never ever hear from me again. That's what this cave represents. A place, a dark place in your life where nobody sees or hears the man or one man in the cave. And so here it is. David has come to a place. He's in this cave. He's in this cave. But what the cave also tells me, it tells me this, that David is now in a place in his life because of the psychotic episode, because of the mental breakdown. David has now hid himself in a cave because he's now in a place in his life where mentally he's checked out. You've been there before? I've checked out. I'm tired of these fools I work with on the job. I've checked out. I'm tired of family members, so guess what? I've checked out. I'm tired of my job, so I've checked out. I'm, I'm tired of this marriage so I checked out. I'm tired of my church, so I checked out. Has anybody ever been there in life where situations have gotten you, have gotten the best of you? Situations have slammed you and torn you apart that I'm at the place that I've got to isolate myself. Why? Because I'm at the place where I've checked out. He's gotten there and he's, he's checked out. He's checked out. But, but not only, I feel you, David. Not only have I checked out, but little, I want to be alone. Y'all, come on. I need you to talk to me now. I don't want to feel like I'm the only person that has issues in here. I don't want to feel like I'm the only person that's, that's got problems. I don't want to feel like I'm the only person with a question mark over their head. But, but I've gone to places because, Sylvia, I've gone through stuff. Gladys, I've gone through stuff. Janet, I've gone through stuff to where I said, you know what? I want to be left alone. Do I got any parents in the room that just say, man, you know, kids get to fighting, kids get to hitting one another, kids get to taking stuff off of each other's plate, and you get to a place like, you know what, I'm locking my bedroom door because I want to be left alone. Don't ask me for any more money to go to Plaza Bonita. Don't ask me for any more money for cheerleading outfits. Oh, I'm, I'm throwing up now. Don't ask me for any money for cheerleading outfits. Don't ask me for any money to pay for your driver's ed. I've checked out I just want to be alone I want to be alone right now I want to be alone David is in this place he's in this place where he's checked out he's isolated and he wants to be alone but this is the interesting fact because history tells us this about the cave the cave of Dulem that David is in, Josh, the cave that he's in. Watch this. It says that history says this, that this is actually a cave that sheep would hang out in. I got to preach now. Uh, this is a cave that sheep like to go into to get away and make a home. So it makes perfect sense why one of the most famous shepherds in the history of the Bible can find a cave that only sheep know how to get into. Y'all going to feel me in a minute? He finds this cave that only sheep hang out in, and it makes perfect sense because while he's there, can I, can I say this? While he's there, somebody else shows up. God messed with me on this epic. He gave me a revelation that, that sheep will come to your ministry when they see how well you do life in the cave. Y'all catch that? People are attracted to the ministry of God when they see how God's people do life while they're isolated, while they've checked out, while they don't want to be bothered with people, yet you still got a praise in your mouth. Yet you're still lifting up holy hands. Yet your faith is still thriving and you haven't checked out. You might have checked out on people, but you haven't checked out on God yet. So they're there and it's amazing. Isn't it amazing, Jordan, that at the point that I hit rock bottom, at the point where I want to be isolated and left by myself, other people show up 
with their problems. Now, I just wanted to chill. I just wanted this to be a margarita day, <clears throat> virgin margarita day. I, I wanted this uh, to be a day where I could be by myself. I wanted this to be a vacation day for myself. I wanted this to be a day where I could take a mental uh, a reassessment day to get my life together. But apparently somebody else didn't get the memo because at the point that I've checked out and isolated myself, I got people now wanting to show up with their problems and I'm not even sure how I'm gonna deal with my problems yet y'all y'all been there y'all y'all okay okay we, we 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 are the same mind which brings us to our key text Roman Josh first Samuel the 22nd chapter verse number two then others began coming men who were in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to David, and he became captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. 400 men showed up while David was isolated. 400 men showed up while David was in his clubhouse. 400 men showed up, and, and they said, David, I, I know you over here because you've had a mental breakdown. And I know you're over here because things are falling apart in your life, but David, you got to hear what's going on in our life too. He shows up, and, and, and I like this because what it shows me is that David in this place in his life, in this position in his life, David was a magnet for thugs, y'all. David knew how to attract thugs to him. David knew how to bring thugs into his presence. He was like, listen, you know how to cut folks, I cut folks too. Uh, you know how to fight, I can fight too. Uh, you know how to use a bow and arrow, I can use a bow and arrow too. He attracts these type of caliber of people while he's Josh stuck in the cave. He sits there, and, and I want you to see the type of people that show up while David's in a cave. I want you to see the type of thugs that David attracts. Scripture says it were the people, the people that showed up were the ones that had been mistreated, the ones that have dealt with oppression or oppressed, and the ones that were broke and couldn't pay their bills. These were the type of people that showed up while David was in the underground, y'all. And they show up to meet David and to get at David. I like that part where it says they were broke and couldn't pay their bills. You need to understand your version of being broke. Our version of being broke in the 21st century was different if you were broke in the thousandth century BC, whatever y'all, it, it, it's different. It's a different type of a different type of poverty, a different type of brokenness. A, a, a debt back then was set up to trap people, and the interest was so high on loans for borrowers, borrowers that the borrower would sometimes have to give away their children to the lo the person that lo lent the lender. They would have to give away their children to the lender as slaves in order to pay back the loan. You got problems, but you ain't giving away your children yet to your lenders. You ain't got that type of broke problems. Not yet. Not in our life. So, so, so they get to David and they're saying, listen, because of this, we're having a mental breakdown too. This is what's interesting about it, Bill Brown. The same person that caused David to go hide for his life, the same person that caused David to have a mental breakdown or to have a, 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 a meltdown of some sort is also the same person that's making these people crazy that are looking for refuge with David. And that's none other than King Saul, uh, uh, David's predecessor, King Saul. Scripture records and lets us know that Saul was given to depression. And now watch this. Because Saul didn't get help, he made everyone's life difficult around them. Can I repeat? I really hate repeating myself, but you don't mind if I repeat that, do you, Willie? Because Saul wouldn't get help with his depression, he made everyone's life around him hell. Brought, brings me to this, this point of clarity that your depression to the people that's wa that are watching right now, to the person that's at home dealing with depression right now, your depression it doesn't only affect you, but it affects everyone else around you. 
Scripture records that, that there were times when Saul has this manic episodes. And when he has this manic episode, he starts to create drama for other people. Can I help somebody else? When you have these episodes with your depression, with your breakdown and mental health, uh, uh, you make drama for other people. And that's why we're preaching on this today. Because we praise God and we thank God for his healing power that you'll get the help that you need and you deserve here today so some of us got a huge decision to make because some of us you're David right now you're isolating yourself but you're stuck in a cave don't want to be bothered with anybody don't want to be bothered with anyone else's issue I don't want to be bothered with anybody else's drama I don't want your headaches. You feel me? I'm good by myself. I got enough to deal with. I, 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 my, my own dirty laundry is backed up right now. I really don't have space for another person's load, y'all. But some of us have a huge decision to make. Because either we're going to come out out of the cave and confront the craziness, the stuff that's making us crazy, or we're going to remain stuck in the cave and allow more people to continue to pour their drama on top of ours. Got a decision to make. Do I stay stuck in this position and allow people to keep piling on more drama, more issues, more problems, and more concerns? Or do I get up out of this cave, this place of isolation, and I start dealing with the craziness that surrounds my life and that's put me isolated in the first place. We, we got a decision to make. So I like this because scripture says in our key verse, scripture says this. Scripture says these 400 men, these, I'm almost done. These 400 men, these 400 soldiers approach David. And when they come to David, scripture says this. David becomes they're captain. I, I like that, y'all. You missed it, Willie. You missed it. It says 400 men that had their own problems, that had their own depression, that were having their own meltdown, that were having their own crazy issues, that were having their own drama in their life. They came to David, and the scripture records that they made David captain. Somebody say captain. Why is that such a big deal, Cephas, that he becomes captain? I, I like the word captain there in Hebrew because the word captain there in Hebrew means to become a general. Which if, he, if David becomes a general, that lets me know that these 400 men, regardless of being stressed out, regardless of being oppressed, regardless of being broke, if they made David general, it sounds like somebody is getting ready to fight. You ought to bless God that all Although I've been broken, that although I've been beaten, that all, although I've been mistreated and disrespected, I thank God that I got just enough energy to fight against the opposition. Amen. Like this, they choose to fight King Saul's bipolarism, and they just choose to fight his schizophrenic nature. And if you get time, your homework assignment is to go look at King Saul's bipolar episode in 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter, and his schizophrenic episode in 1 Samuel, the 28th chapter. Somebody say, help us, Lord. They, they, they come to a point where they say, listen, David, uh, uh, I know that we're in a cave, but I refuse to stay stuck in a cave. Can't stay like this. Can't be here. Sylvia, I can't let depression run my life. I can't let depression continue to keep me from my children. I can't continue to allow depression in order to, to uh, contribute to messing with my finances. I can't allow depression to get in my way of my relationships with my family members and other people. I can't stay stuck in the cave. So David trained these 400 men. Check this out. This is what I love about it. Scripture lets us know David trained these 400 men while they were in a cave. Can I say this? 
While we're in the cave is a perfect place to get your game plan together. While we're in the cave and we're isolated and we've taken and we've checked out, that is the perfect time to get my life in order, to get my praise in order, to get my finances in order, to get my mental health in order, to get my strength in order. Why? It happens while I'm in the cave, y'all. The latter part of scripture records this. That these 400 men that showed up with depressive issues, that showed up with problems, um, scripture records this about them, uh, that they ended up becoming David's special forces. They ended up becoming his special ops. Most of these men that were in the cave that he trained, the 400 men that he trained, that he trained while he was in the cave, Adullam, ended up becoming good with spears, with bows, and with arrows. Kind of like they had that green arrow thing going on. You know what I mean? He had found a SWAT team, so to speak, while he was in the cave. Scripture also records this. This is what blew my mind, Janet, is a lot of these men, when David took over the kingdom, when he acquired the throne, a lot of these men became part of David's senior cabinet. Did you catch the scripture scripture says that they they came in oppressed mistreated and broke they came in broke but they got themselves together and they left with government jobs y'all you better praise God for that because they took time to work on themselves in the cave these men learn how to fight while they were stuck in a cave stand your feet I'm done I'm done Bill 24 minutes later I'm done Stand to your feet. I told you this message today is for somebody that's in a mood to where I've just checked out of some things. I've checked out. I'm isolating myself from people. I want to isolate. I know how it is. I want to isolate myself from the drama. I want to isolate myself from the gossip. I've had it. I've had it up to here with the mistreatment. I've had it up to here with the oppression. I've had it up to here with the name calling. I've had it up to here with the lying. I've had it up to here with the cheating. I've had it up to here with everything. So I just, I just want to remain in my cave. I just want to isolate myself. Don't call me. I'll call you. Don't text me because I'll probably block you. Don't instant message me because I'm getting off of social media. But I've chosen to isolate myself. I've, I've chosen to back myself, my life, in a cave. And I want to pray with you because I know depression is a real issue. I know that your mental health or your mental state, there are real problems there. And that's not something we should take lightly. That's not something that we should just skip over. But there are real issues that are prevalent in this generation. No, I don't probably see too many blind people like the scripture records. I don't probably see too many lame people that can't walk. But Lord knows there's a lot of people that have manifested with mental health issues. And, and, and I want to pray. I want to pray for some people that maybe say, look, I'm not, I don't need to be medicated, Cephas. I don't need to be treated uh, within a clinic. But I, I do understand that I have to deal with depression. It is a real, it is reality for me. It is a real struggle for me. It is a real issue for me. Uh, it's a real issue for the people in my family because maybe you got it all together right now. Maybe the people uh, uh, that I'm speaking to right now online, maybe you got it all together. But maybe the people that are, t that are around you, maybe the people that are in your house, maybe the people that are in your family, they need some help. Well, we want to open up this altar right now. And we want to pray for some people and pray with some people because we believe that the power of God and the power of the Holy Ghost is enough to heal people, to set humanity free. Hello, we want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.